Hello and welcome to the Plo Newsroom. Uh, today is February the 4th, 2023, and uh, you're listening to Philipp Bauer from Munich and my co-host. Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. Welcome on this nice, shiny, no, it's a rather sad, <laughs> rainy, drowsy Saturday here in Rotterdam and probably not much better for you, Philip. It was actually sunny. I was just playing soccer outside and at some point the sun came out and I couldn't see anything. I, I was playing terribly anyway, uh, so the sun is just a sad excuse for I my um, dismal performance <laughs> on the field. Yeah, I had so, to hide in the gym. It was rainy <laughs> and it was nasty and you, nah. We'll hopefully get better, uh, nicer weather uh, in a few days, which we'll of course talk about in this podcast. Yeah, hopefully some snow maybe. Yeah. So, so uh, the Plone Newsroom, a podcast about Plone, a content management system written in Python, a uh, great community. We're a part of it. That's why we're talking about that. Uh, we do this uh, in audio and in video. So if you want to see uh, our um beautiful faces we can you can see that on youtube or uh if if you want to spare yourself that experience just pick the audio version you find us on plon.org slash newsroom we have a small corner there um yeah yeah and that's about what the introduction we, welcome what are we back to discuss this 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 episode it's been a while so yeah, it's when been was a while. our last episode I, I wrote down it was october uh, no sorry october no, no, november 26th was our issue 12 we're now uh, recording on our 13th episode uh, uh, on that's why we had to wait one day otherwise we would have recorded it on a friday Oh, no, not Friday the 13th, but it's Saturday the 4th, and it's our 13th uh, recording. Yeah, sorry, we haven't been back, but we have been very busy uh, because of the, the thing we couldn't talk about, uh, uh, or we talked about all the time, but the, the, final, the final reveal uh, 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 was in December. So the big news is, uh, uh, of course, Plan 6 has been released on December 12th after almost or more than three years of long work by many people uh, forming the Plone community. Yeah, we, we had uh, a release date, we communicated that, and we kept the promise and actually did that on, on that Monday. Uh, it was a semi-soft release, like the, the packages were, were there, but the press release on Plone.org uh, was not published uh, yet. And uh, but we managed to uh, to relaunch Plone.org, the website itself. I would want to say it was not it was not Plone Six only. It was also Plone.org, which runs on Plone yeah. Six with the new uh, uh, default photo front end, uh, which also took a lot of work. Uh, both for you, Philip, and me as well. I mean, it's not like we, we did our small part, but I think for many people, the November uh, and December was really like a crawl to get and, and a, a flurry to get everything everything up and running. Uh, uh, also, if you consider that we had our conference uh, only one and a half months before, uh, and that also takes a lot of time of people to prepare for the conference and stuff. I, I chatted with some people afterwards and were like, yeah, always after the conference, there's this, this kind of slowing because people have to relax. But there was not much not at relaxing all for was, many people. Yeah, because we were, don't undersell that. We were both very involved in the release and uh, migrating Plon.org, and there was a pretty crazy couple of uh, weeks, uh, two, two very intensive weeks uh, to get all that done. Uh, a lot of people were working on that and we, uh, I think we pulled it off really beautifully. Um, obviously, uh, that was not the biggest headline on the New York Times, which I would have expected. Uh, but uh, as usual, Plone is gr the Plone community is great in uh, produce, uh, pr uh, creating a great product, but really abysmal at marketing. But we, we did well. I'm not, not th uh, trying to blame uh, us for bad marketing. We did uh, with the few resources we had, Riku Packer, Packer and others uh, did a lot of uh, good work with the marketing. But as I said, yeah, there's still, New there's York still Times front page, that would be something. <laughs> For Plone 7. Süddeutsche Zeitung. Yes. Yeah. Also good. <laughs> so what, what did you do after after the last, uh, like over the over the holidays? Was it a busy time for you, or did you just for relax? me? Was, I always have this tendency, like, oh, and now I have one and a half weeks of free time between uh, Christmas and New Year, and I can do this and that. And then after, like, uh, we have this strange uh, second Christmas Day in in the Netherlands, and after the second Christmas Day, yeah, an extra holiday. Uh, uh, we don't have all these nice. Uh, 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 all the traditional religious holidays uh, you still have in southern Germany, so we uh, we we get our second Christmas Day, uh, and, then, and I was like, 
<sighs> okay, <laughs> nothing more. So for some miraculous reason, I, I was able to, to get into the console gaming again. I know you're a, you're a console gamer as well when I visited you a few years ago. In the, so I, I, I pushed that away for many, many years, and then I couldn't resist the temptation anymore, so I bought myself a PlayStation 5. Uh, Yay! And that's now in the attic. So now, and it's also, I think it's a bit of work hygiene uh, that, that kind of tripped me up before. I was, I was gaming now and then a bit on my uh, uh, on a PC here down, uh, uh, down the desk, which I only use for gaming, but it's in the same room. So I'm working and gaming in the same room. And now it's like, okay, bye-bye work, bye-bye uh, uh, obligations or anything type code, whatever, or <laughs> podcast recording. I'm going upstairs to the attic. I have a controller in my hands and I'm... That's off. good. Yeah, and it I, works. I, 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 I was, I was like, is, that really, is it really that simple? The trick, it is. It is. I'm. I'm I finished uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, that was oh, wow. good. And I'm. Uh, I'm. I ordered a VR2. The 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 you did. Uh, 3D oh. headset. Uh, that's going to come in like two weeks or so. I'm excited. Uh, maybe it doesn't suck. I hope so. It was expensive enough. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 okay, so I, I always all the VR stuff goes behind me because of my small birth defect. I don't see depth, uh, so I'm I'm always I'm not always annoyed, but I'm I'm confronted with it now recently because also in the theaters or the the the, the cinema, they go f for these uh, 3D. Uh, 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 so you, you didn't see the new Avatar movie. No, not yet. No, I, I'm waiting for the for the two D uh, flat. Uh, uh, and, and they're showing really, it in two D anyway as well. Yeah, uh, we, that's that's true. But many yeah. movies now are first uh, uh, aired in or are shown in the cinema in three D, and that goes totally besides me because then I only see the if it had, they use the color. There's either the shutter system or the color system, and with the color I would only see the the red. The that reddish, because it doesn't. Okay. It, my brain doesn't merge them yeah, again yeah, into yeah, the yeah. full spectrum. So, oh, I'm really, I'm curious what you think about the VR stuff. And uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm ex my my colleague Stefan is totally into that, and he's he's probably uh, laughing uh, about me because that's just beginner stuff. There by buying the Sony uh, VR two, uh, yeah. he, he he does all the the, the pro stuff. And, okay. But, um, so that was I'm my, just out to have some funny. So but, I really uh, had cool down in the end of the year. I was like, okay, don't take on any more work. Don't try to do hobby stuff now. It's been it's been fine. Uh, uh, relax. And then yeah, January came. I was trying came. To, 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 to relax as well, but I took some oh, yeah. work with me on holidays. And then flu season kicked in. My mother-in-law got a, a lung infection uh, and, and oh, yeah. pneumonia. You, and I was sick as well for a whole week. Uh, so it was a, not as... A, a, it was relaxing enough, so I wasn't as sick as I could have been. I was uh, well enough to, uh, I don't know, um, em empty YouTube, yeah. uh, empty yeah. uh, my Netflix account. Yeah. Um, but I always yeah. say that, that I, I know some uh, many people call this the the men the men illness in the yes. Netherlands, uh, but it's like okay you're you're miserable but you're not really ill and it's somewhere in between and you don't feel like stuff but yeah that was that was the, the flu season in yeah I, d I did have a lot of obligations aside from Latin by the way I have to learn Latin with my daughter. She switched from French to Latin because she's dyslexic and French is really, really hard for dyslexic people because oh, the written and the is. spoken language is so different. That's true. Uh, and with Latin, it's much easier. So we had, I, I had to bury my hatred for Latin and uh, pick it up. So oculi dolen, which is like my eyes hurt. Uh, so so you're, you're, I'm, you're practicing. I'm fluent now. We can do this in Latin. You're practicing your poker face in educating uh, 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 your, your, your teenagers <laughs> and helping them with the studies. Cool. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, work so has picked up a lot since then. So after the car, after the the release yeah. and uh, after the holidays, like uh, projects, uh, crazy. So it, it's it's not like we're slacking, and that's why you don't didn't get an episode. It's, and it's not like the Plon Six release uh, drained us completely. We were. Yes, we were exhausted, but we were also really busy with work and like some private life is also nice. Yeah, but I, I, I also uh, normally in January, it's like, OK, you've got these New Year's receptions at organizations and then people chat and they've had a kind of holiday vacation and that they, they discuss. And then so for us, the, the integrators, I mean, both Philip and, and me work uh, at for an, we, we are Plone integrators, uh, Plone developers. And then the, the new plans and, and the things that people want to do kind of start coming in around February, March. And, and for some reason now, I think 
everything that was not finished in 2022 just continued in January 23. It has been going on like, like indeed, budget discussions, uh, uh, plans. Uh, we're going to talk about it shortly, some, some bug fixes and things and technical issues that came in. So, yeah, sorry for the small hiatus, but we're back uh, with uh, issue uh, in episode 13. Um, yeah, what do Philip, we do? We yes. were also like, because we did have, didn't have that much time, we were like, okay, we can't prepare that much. Uh, we could talk a lot about what's new in Plone 6. Um, we're going to do that for later in the year because we've been talking about Plone 6 for, since episode one, to put it yes. like that. <laughs> we've been following the development status. So we're going to focus this episode on uh, community news, some news from the Plone board uh, 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 for the Plone Foundation. There's some news on the steering circle. Uh, and of course, there's a very nice, a very cool, and I'm really happy to go there again after a three-year forced hiatus, uh, the Alpine City Sprint in Innsbruck. Yeah. Let, let's just say, uh, let me just say one thing about Plone 6. If, if, if you're listening to this and you haven't, uh, you've ho you, you held out, how do you say? Um, you were uh, on the sidelines and thinking, yeah. oh, this is not done yet and I'm never using a, pre, uh, a pre-final version. Um, all your, your excuses are gone. Uh, Actually, they've been gone for like one and a half years or maybe two years now uh, because Plan 6 uh, has been very stable in, even in development in early uh, releases. But now um, jump on that, move your projects to Plan 6, start new projects with Volto um, if you dare. Um, and I dare you to dare. Uh, so there's nothing negative about that. I have a lot of discussions with clients who are conservative and say, okay, when should we use Volto? When should we use Classic now? And uh, we can do the uh, next episode about that. Yeah, I, have to, I, have the same, I have the same things as well with my, with my clients and discussions there. Uh, yeah, we can do that. It, That's it, a good it, point. The, the consultant answer is always, it depends. But uh, indeed, the Dutch, we, have right. this Dutch, we have this Dutch saying, uh, looking the cat out of the tree literally translates so but it's like the cat sitting in the tree and waiting to see whatever happens on the ground and if it's safe again to 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 get out of the tree again but literally translated in dutch it's a bit weird yeah that's time that time is really over now it's really time to participate also because we need we like all the other users people need the feedback from people to see what's what can be improved? I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding of using it. And then we can really start also fixing the small bugs that are still there. And we can also look onto next uh, uh, next improvements. Especially with people who are not experienced with Volto yet, because they have to use the documentation, which is like, and, and the training and the, all the text that is there and follow that and create tickets if something is unclear on ask on the community. So the feedback is very much appreciated because uh, when we write documentation, uh, we don't write it for ourselves because usually we know what we're writing about. I don't know what Fred is writing about, so I'm really happy that he writes stuff. And uh, same with uh, Jens and, and others. Uh, but uh, everyone needs to use that and give feedback on what needs to be improved uh, when you uh, start uh, jumping in the deep end with yeah, Volto. Well I think we'll talk about a bit of a documentation on the upcoming, uh, when we talk about the sprint. Yeah. So the first major one, release news, because we had our last uh, ep- recording uh, at the end of November. We have, of course, Plow 6.0 final was released on Monday, December 12th with a soft release. And the Volto release uh, uh, joining that was 16.4. We'll talk a bit about that later while I mentioned different Volto release. At the end of December, uh, we had two small micro patches if you look at the semfer semfer uh, it would be a, a major minor patch and this would be a, a patch on the patch the fourth number we had the plone 66 plone 6001 and uh, 02 and also we had plone uh, 52101 and 52102 these were very small releases in the number but they addressed a um, yeah, medium medium security issue in ZOP, in ZOP 4 and ZOP 5. Um, they were released at the end of December. Um, and after that, because last week, uh, Maritz released uh, Plone 5.2.11 and Plone 6.01. And those are the real first real, my, real patch releases where uh, many small uh, uh, fixes have been done and also some stuff that has been fixed in those 00 releases. So what was going on with SOAP? Uh, people... Uh, uh, I don't know the whole detail, but I know the, the, uh, a lot of about uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the th- stuff that uh, happened afterwards. Um, there was an issue in SOAP 4 and SOAP 5 that if you 
didn't specify in the code uh, what, what the content type was of any response that was returned from SOAP, uh, then it would default uh, 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 not to, uh, to, I think, text HTML or, or it didn't do anything. And the problem with that is that if you don't specify the content type, then your browser is like, oh, something is, come, is thrown at me. What should we do with it? Let's mm. guess. <laughs> JavaScript. Oh, let's execute some JavaScript. And, and th that kind of misunderstandings uh, of, of uh, developer intention, like, hey, I want to do this, and the default was not correctly specified. So SOAP uh, 4 and 5 added some patches really low level to have a sane fallback for uh, the content type header if that content type header was not already set in the code. And that caused a few regressions of me personally and our clients and also my, Maritz is my colleague. So that took us a, a, a bit of January uh, busy. Um, because what happened uh, was a really, I think, edge case. I wasn't sure at the time, it was the beginning of, of January. And we updated to Plone 5 to 10 one, I think, for one of our Plone 5 two sites. And after the next day, a customer called like, hey, uh, the styling is gone from our website. We were like, hmm, styling gone? So we checked, indeed, the, the CSS was no longer parsed. And there was a really sp specific issue with, uh, in the end, I'm not going to tell the conclusion because otherwise we can fill up the whole uh, <laughs> podcast, which is not interesting. It's really, it, it is, I th still think, an edge case. But what happened was that in the, on the first uh, 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 rendering, uh, uh, Plone outputted a nice, we, we bundled the whole CSS of a site in, in one large CSS for for speedy uh, for speediness and not individual things so we bundled the CSS the first delivery was done all right but then after an hour for example if you use caching for production environments then the browser would say oh I have to record I have to do another request and in our case we were using if modified since headers. So the browser was asking the server, hey, you sent me this large file uh, uh, one and a half hours ago. It had, had this unique e-tag on it. Uh, is that e-tag still valid? Is that still the most current version? And what then happens is that the server says, yes, it's still the most current version. So you don't have to request it again. And then you can happily continue using 400, 500, two megabytes of CSS without ever redownloading it again. So that's, that's awesome. The problem was with Varnish, because of this SOAP uh, security fix, when the 304 or the if modified since request was done, Plone answered and said, yes, it's still the same. Oh, um, but the, the, the content type header has now changed from text CSS to, I think it was text HTML or text plain. And what did Varnish? Varnish said, okay, thank you for the response. Oh, but you changed the content type uh, field. I'll update the object in the Varnish cache and set it now to text HTML. So, and every subsequent request for the same CSS bundle that hadn't changed was suddenly delivered, not with text CSS anymore. So the, br the, the, browser got, the, brow the browser got this huge CSS file. It was like, hey, but you say it's not, that's not true, so I'm not doing it. And there's another thing. That we, it's best practice now for many years already. If you look at Nginx or Apache configurations on, all over online, you see these huge lists of this is the, uh, an optimized uh, uh, configuration for Nginx and for Apache. I mean, always host your plan site in, behind a uh, correct web server that does a lot of the filtering and, and, uh, and other optimizations. And we added a header there that said to the browser, uh, don't sniff yourself for content. That was exactly also why SOAP fixed this in the first place. <laughs> so what happened is we sent the header to the browser like, okay, if you get something that looks like CSS, but doesn't, is not labeled as CSS, you shouldn't parse it anymore. But that was exactly what Farnish did after one or two hours because it misread a wrong label coming from the 304 not modified response. Hmm. And that took us Horrible. like two days. <laughs> it didn't hit me at all. I didn't have a single project where I, I had that problem. That's, no, if you, if you had been busy enough and you didn't install Plone 5.2.10.1, then you didn't have this problem because 5.2.10, so it's really a regression between 5.2.10 and 5.2.11 because this is, this is fixed now in 5.2.11 and it's also fixed in Plone 6.0.1. So I yeah, did. Maybe we skipped that uh, yeah, you, you, but, uh, in that week. The thing is, I have this, this very nice, friendly colleague called Maurits van Rees, and he's our release manager. And I was also like, well, Maurits, like, maybe so we're he, living 
you're maybe the guinea we, pigs. We're yeah, actually we are. Well, it's good you're eating part your own of the dog guinea food. pigs. So we eat our, yeah, but we're rather we're, we're direct on on updates, and we we oh, yeah we, we usually try them ourselves on updates too. So yes. we we we're, some there are a couple of projects where they're always up to date and bleed, not bleeding edge, but the like the lot, latest release. Some some use uh, source checkouts, but uh, I don't know why why yeah. that didn't hit me. And, I, and I haven't only, investigated. I, mean, I was happy that it was fixed, and now I updated everything to. Uh, Six zero one and yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the newest uh, five two release. And I'm not advocating for for holding back on on updating the Plo releases because also for our customers there no. are there are also uh, li like security updates and fixes in there. So really stay on on the updates. Uh, but yeah, 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 in this small case. But we were we found it out very quickly. Uh, I posted a message on on the community uh, 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 discourse. Uh, 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 forum on Friday afternoon and I got a reply from somebody on Saturday that said hey my colleagues had this issue last month and it looks very similar thank you we'll investigate and then we had some other feedback from other people coming as well cool. so that was my that was I think yeah an, an interesting part of my January where we uh, found out this this yeah five conditions and then something happens that you really don't want but that's <laughs> software development for you yeah that's that's normal just yeah. uh, something clients obviously don't appreciate because they just see uh, something's broken, piece of yeah. turd, please fix it. And yeah. then you so, spend hours and you, you don't even dare to exp try to explain something like that to them because it's just... It's, no, no, it's... Uh, I, I would fall asleep if, I'd be, if I wouldn't be a plone developer uh, during what you just explained. Yeah, but it's, I was wondering, should I, do this, this, uh, should I do this in the podcast because I'm really so involved? But it's, maybe it's nice to have these, these uh, kind of... Yeah, we call it war story. I'm not a fan of war stories anymore to relabel that since, nope. uh, since a year for some reason. Uh, but these, these stories from the trenches or what really happens uh, there, you, you get a call from a customer, you start digging in and it's, it's the latest update. And you, um, but it was cool. It was really like, like pair programming with Maurits for half a day together, opening like we are talking now and, and what's going on here? What's going on here? Uh, it was, uh, it was, it was nice. I, I, I was thinking maybe I should write down the story as well because it involved a nice bit of varnish log uh, 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 introspection to actually see because you don't see these requests normally because they're all done between plone and varnish. And you, from a developer, you only see what's coming back yeah. from varnish to the browser normally. So it's it's normally a bit difficult to see what's going on in the in the requests between and uh, varnish, varnish is pretty and Plone. complex in itself. So we have this this tool that not everyone knows that much about. And we we had a couple of really tough varnish issues in our projects with uh, cache poisoning and people seeing other other person's content. And like, why am I Fred now? I'm not Fred. I'm someone else. And oh, yeah. uh, that, that is really nasty, yeah, yeah. hard to debug. And, uh, but when, once you find out, we, I, I have some, some stories to tell there. It's a, it's but a, whatever. It's a generic development joke, right? What's the, the most difficult problems in, in computer science or software development? Cache like invalidation. And cache naming. invalidation, naming things, and the third one, uh, off by one errors. Oh, God. Yeah, but th uh, there's more stuff that happened. Um, so aside from the Plone releases, uh, a bunch of Volta releases uh, came out. There is not the one big feature that we should uh, we were mentioning now, but uh, generally uh, import, uh, performance and uh, stability was increased, and a couple of bugs was were fixed. Uh, and I um, I recommend everyone. Uh, not only about Volto, but also about Plone. So uh, since when Fred says, okay, I, I updated and something broke and that's super annoying, that is um, the takeaway is not, as Fred said, to not to not update, but to keep up to date with updates and read what's in the changelog because your clients and yourself, you will be benefiting from the bug fixes that all the developers put in there. And the same is true for Volto and even more so because the development speed is faster and the frequency of releases is faster. So in my Volto projects, I'm uh, like at least once a week or every two weeks, I'm updating the Volto version and I'm ch using the new Volto versions, using new 
add-ons, also add-ons for Volto, like drop-down menu, uh, form, uh, the form blocks and stuff like that. They're constantly being updated and changed and improved and keep, keep, uh, keep updating them because this, this is not a static stack. It's a stack that is uh, rapidly evolving and uh, getting better and the bugs that you are fighting against and you, you're wondering why is that not working as I expect? Maybe it's been fixed because uh, in, the, in the last release and you just didn't update your, uh, your Volto. Especially so, while you're in development. I mean, this is the whole, especially, uh, yeah, this yeah. whole shift in, in website development. F yeah, it's already going on for like five or ten years when the, where the front-end development is going much quicker than... Uh, 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 where, and there's a lot of innovation. Maybe people say too much innovation and it's going too fast. But especially when you're developing, keep the stuff updated. And in that after release, regularly check uh, for, for new fixes. Because indeed, uh, with, when you now look at Plone 6 releases, uh, Maris now also mentions the, at the time, latest uh, Volto uh, uh, release, which gets also minor updates. So for, for Plone 6, there's uh, Volto 16, that will be the, uh, the major version that belongs to, uh, to Plone 6.0. But there's indeed 16.4 uh, for the zero release and now 16.9 for the uh, Plone 6.01 release. Exactly. Um, and indeed, there have been a, no a number of other small fixes, uh, noteworthy. Um, uh, but we'll check the news item on Plone.org and check the, de the detailed release notes that Maurits creates with every package that has been updated because uh, both the front end and the back end or classic UI consist of a lot of packages. That's how the, the programming uh, language works, where you bundle everything in, in modules. And for every module update, there's a small description there and you can really check everything out. There is also a side effect from the Plon 6 release that we did last year. Last year sounds like a long time <laughs> long. ago that we just did Do you in know December. When Plon 6 was released, Philip. Yes. <laughs> um, and that is that uh, Plon 4.3 is officially completely out of support. There's no support whatsoever, not even security support happening uh, from the side of the Plon community. So if you still have stuff like that running, uh, you're completely out of experience. Excuses uh, planning your migration. Obviously, um, the security team of Plone is so kind, out of the goodness of their heart, uh, hearts, to uh, test hotfixes against even older Plone versions than yeah, the, the officially yeah. uh, supported ones. But there is like there's no guarantee whatsoever, and no. Extra amount of work being done to make sure stuff like that is actually secure. And since this is 4.3, so it's been uh, similar, uh, same as Plone 5.0 and 5.1. They it only supports Python 2, and support for Python 2 uh, ended on January 1st, 2020, not like December 12, uh, 2022. So um, yeah, no excuses uh, staying on that. Um, especially with the really good migration story uh, that exists now. Um, maybe, yeah, that might be uh, the, yeah. the, uh, the moment to plug something that I'm, I was working on. Um, <laughs> again, <laughs> migrations, as usual. Bring it on, bring it on, Philip. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, mean, work I was working on, on varnish cash poisoning issues, and you <laughs> sent me a message like last week. <laughs> bring it on. I was like, what did he do? Yeah, um, so... As you as you probably know, I've been working with uh, uh, Collective Export Import to get all these old like Plone 4.3, Plone 5, Plone 5.2, 5 5.1 uh, sites from Python 2 to Plone 6 and Python 3, and that works like a charm. Uh, but that that is that relies heavily on the Plone REST API, and that only exists uh, or only supports uh, Plone uh, 4.3. I like uh, if you have any Plone 4.3, you can install the REST API. You need to pick the right versions, and you can go ahead and use Collective Export Import to export basically everything and import it in Plone 6 in Python 3 again. Uh, yeah, so that's basically. So it, it, it took. So I did a small uh, because somebody uh, had a problem with that, and I saw the documentation on Plone REST API. So I added that at the end of the README, and yeah. uh, now on Collective Export Import at the end for Plone Four. Indeed, pl Export Import depends for its exporting part. In the exporting, you, all, you normally do that on an old Plone site. So you need to install to have to not install it, but have export import active in that old Plone environment. We only go back to Plone 4 and you need to add a number of pinnings there because otherwise it picks the latest versions that are nowadays Python 3 only. 
Um, but before Plan 4... Mm. Yeah, you're you're out of luck. Uh, there is uh, the the option that you have is JSONify and Transmogrifier. Um, Transmogrifier is great, uh, but it's complex, much more complex than export import. And JSONify is super old, but it works in Python two two even, and uh, supports Plone versions up to z z one dot something. And I just had a project with a, Py a Plone 2.2. 2. Um, and uh, so I use Collective JSONify, read the documentation, mm -hmm. and try to modify the export so I can use the data, which is JSON, uh, to import it with Collective Export Import. Um, and I was in for a nasty surprise because ever since the very beginning of time, obviously, uh, in J Collective JSONify, the documentation had a line uh, about extending that. And uh, that was, that is, um, I have to say it, um, it says how to extend it. You have a few options. You can pass additional wrappers to the get item method, yada, yada. Uses external methods is crazy and weird. That's old as well. It's yeah. a lie. It's just a lie. It doesn't exist. <laughs> that feature has never existed. There is not a single line of code that supports this documentation. I was, okay, I'm, 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 I'm okay with features that are there, but not in the documentation. But I'm not okay with features that are in the documentation, we're, we're normally not in the code. That is just a no-go. We are normally complaining about the documentation not being written for features, but you now experience the other one, that documentation was written for a feature that was not there yet. It was just wishful thinking. So I, I, I actually added the feature. There's a pull request. I'm going to merge that soon now. So the, the, the whole thing is uh, with that addition and a couple of nifty tricks, and uh, I, you can export uh, plone site uh, for any like really really old plone sites with collective JSONify, double on your file system and import it in export import. There's one tiny thing that you need in export import which I just added. Uh, I, I think I merged that already. No, I haven't. Uh, but it's it's going to be merged in the next uh, two weeks. Uh, that is support for any iterator because the JSONify dumps your items in uh, by the default setup, obviously. Uh, you can modify that. But the default setup uh, so stores every item in its, like every content uh, type uh, item in its separate JSON file in a l directory structure. And that is uh, you, you, collective export import doesn't know how to deal with that. So what I did, I added support for a iterator, and then I wrote a generator uh, that I'm passing to export import. And the generator just walks the file system and picks them in the right order because they're nicely sorted uh, by, um, by by the path and the they, folder they, structure. Yeah, the you, get the chicken, structure you get the chicken and egg problem that you want to import something on a on a subpath that hasn't. Yeah, yeah, not you have to yet. deal with that as well. Yeah. And there's a stuff that uh, JSON if you doesn't 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 support but this this way you can uh, you, you don't have to use transmogrify you can use export import to uh, in, import stuff from collective uh, from uh, really really old plone sites that's really nice i'm going to do a short yeah. demo uh, at the sprint because I'm, I'm happy about that. I don't have to use Transmogrifier for that. Yeah, the ringing back. This Always is indeed no, no, no excuse. No, not no, no excuse. But there are now a multitude of options for even very old plots so to move now. Sometimes exactly. I wonder, Philip, does it have to do with your? Still has to do with your studies. What did you study again? <laughs> history. Yeah, history. Yeah, Isn't it a coincidence that a historian, a historian switched to software development and is now an expert on 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 still migrating the most old. <laughs> Installations. I'm, I'm, that is just a small part of the work. Then I'm taking the uh, the data and I'm creating Volto sites with that. That is much more like yeah, it actually yeah, yeah. takes more it's, time since I'm not that experienced in Volto yet. So I, it just takes more time, yeah. uh, which is good because I'm learning new things. The other thing is just, okay, I have to do old stuff over and over in weird different dialects. So what yeah. else uh, happened? Um, um, can I plug one more thing? Like sure. You had your, your JSONify uh, moment. Uh, 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 so there's, there's a recent discussion which is interesting because um, the, since Plone 5.2 and Python 3, the uh, default uh, uh, server of web server component in, uh, in Plone or in SOAP actually has switched uh, to a whiskey server and not the old uh, SOAP 2 uh, server that was in there. And uh, recently an issue popped up with people having a problem uh, uh, with uh, uh, larger setups where they had multiple ZEO clients uh, running. 
uh, that the startup would run into a loop, and it has to do something uh, with uh, an option that has been in, in Plone and Soap for a long time, which is the fast uh, listen option, which means that as soon as you start the, the process, then the, 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 the process that starts kind of already opens the ports, uh, uh, that you can connect to. So, for example, if you have your plo- the default one is always like 8080. So, uh, soap starts up. It already opens the port to 8080 because up in the stack there's, a, for example, a varnish or an nginx, and requests might be coming in. And then, when soap starts up further, then a number of workers are started, and then the starting process hands over uh, uh, the communication ports to the individual workers. And something in there is going wrong, or has been going wrong for a long time maybe already, we don't know, um, but it, it has to do uh, with also how busy your server is, how busy your stuff starts up. Um, and it was really interesting because an issue was, uh, 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 people moved it to GitHub to discuss it on an issue. And also the main author of the pilots project, uh, uh, Bert J.V. Uh, Regeer, uh, chimed in and he said, I don't know what's going on here, but this is not how it is supposed to work nowadays. The only problem, mm-hmm. partly also that, because SOAP is so old that uh, uh, part that we are using some modules that used to be public but are now not public anymore because they've been kind of removed or completely redone in Python 3. So there's some stuff going on there. There's a workaround now. Um, Maurits added, uh, I think Maurits, somebody else added uh, a new option to Plone Recipe SOAP 2 instance for Plone 601 that's included in 601. Uh, where you can uh, have this new option, async core use poll, uh, that adds that option to the waitress file. If you want more information, uh, check the community, uh, plone.org, where there's a, a large discussion on there and uh, also the issue. Uh, if you haven't seen this issue, it's not really relevant for you. This is another one of those uh, uh, smaller edge cases that people will hopefully solve uh, in the next uh, weeks, two months. And Philip, I saw you writing something in our cheat sheet. Uh, there is also another workaround. I, I just, um, I'm not, uh, I'm just looking for a comment. Uh, Bernd, uh, Bernd uh, J. W. Regier. Um, yeah, I, I think he, he's, he's, he, he commented on the code and like, I, I can't find it right now, but it was something like, uh, I thought it was funny, like, oh, this is as broken as it was before. And not like his code, but the, the, the initial discussion uh, yeah, yeah, was yeah. about yeah, broken is, code and then the fix, yeah, that, that is as broken as it, as it was before. Uh, but what, what you should do uh, is actually give a, uh, not, not because Waitress is terrible, Waitress is far from terrible, it's a, it's a great wait, uh, Wizzy server. It's our default uh, Wizzy server. It's the default. In the distribution. Um, but you could, could, should give Pyruvate a, te- uh, a test. Uh, we're using it in a couple projects in production for two years now. Uh, it is really fast. It's written in Rust by Thomas Shore, a member of the Plone community. He's coming to the sprint as well. And it runs without any issues. Um, I'm, I'm, I, the, the, the bottleneck, obviously, is uh, for Plone is not uh, the Whiskey server, but uh, SP, especially for Classic, it's still like template rendering, even though it's got much, much faster in, uh, in the last release. Uh, but um, it is it is really fast pyruvate. Uh, give that a, uh, a try run. It has good documentation. He's given a talk and a training about that. Uh, it's p p y like Python uh, ruvate. I think it has something to do with brewing beer. So there's another is incentive for you. Yeah, beer um, or or crystal. I, I, so I, I think crystal first... meth. No, I'm not sure. No, <laughs> the, the the what's in the what's in the soil. No, but was, no, no, uh, it's, it's about presentation, beer, I think. But he's been working on it for quite a while. I, yeah, yeah. I visited the Plone conference, in, for the German Plone conference in, in, in Munich, uh, the last one that was held. I think he also had a talk there about it. Oh. Like there are a number of, I mean, whiskey servers are, are, there are a multitude of whiskey servers because they are part of the, most of the web frameworks, the Python web frameworks uh, uh, where they are in. Uh, so you've got like a, a G Unicorn, uh, Bjorn was one, uh, uh, Waitress is a big one coming from Pylons, and there are a number of ones. And, and indeed, Thomas Shaw looked at uh, many of them, did some performance uh, uh, tests. And like you said, uh, uh, if your uh, uh, response is mainly depending on re- template rendering and CPU intensive, then it's not really an, a, a big optimization like uh, your site is not going to run twice as fast with Pyruvate because it's just the middleman handling the stuff. but. The less overhead in the middle band, the better. Yes. 
Um, so this is indeed people could test. I think Thomas also posted on community uh, the small instructions for it uh, to edit. It's linked like, like three or four lines. So yeah, I wouldn't really advise uh, myself. I would first try it in, in testing environments, uh, 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 in a testing environment, not directly in production, but it has been used in production by uh, a lot of people already and by Thomas himself and by you. So that's another, and that's, but it's also like, there's not always one solution to a problem. There are m more solutions. Yeah. So that's a lot of release news. It's, we're 40 but, minutes and we're, we've, we've passed the release news. Okay, let's, let's go to community news. Community like news. Two, da -da -da -da. Two, two small items. Yeah. Uh, one is that the uh, the Plone Foundation Board has uh, has gotten its priority straight uh, for 2023. Uh, so there's a news item on Plone.org. Um, can you walk us through what what they're planning to do? Are they going to uh, start yeah, a revolution? Yeah. So we had a new uh, the new Plone Board was installed uh, uh, on the Plone Conference, and of course after that they uh, come together and they discuss together. Okay, what uh, what was cool? What was nice? What where can we improve? And they set their priorities and they did a, a post on Plone.org now listing those. Uh, uh, Priority. So I'm just going to do the main bullet points and not the sub bullet points or whatever. Please go to the post and read it yourself and, and form your own opinion. Um, mainly, uh, I'll, I'll read out, uh, clarify the role and strengthen uh, the, the Plone Foundation, uh, one of the priorities. Ensure that the role of the board is to oversee and assist the Plone project and community, not to manage directly. That's and, and not really an action item. That's, I, I thought that is like obvious it's it's always been like that the the board never managed plone the uh, the the uh, product or the community it was always self managed it was yeah it's it's but still if you look at if you look directly at the bylines of the plone community of the plone foundation then there is some there there's confusion there because those bylines were written like 20 years ago or maybe longer so and and it's also there's a very thin line between facilitating or still directing a bit in facilitating and facilitating and it makes it even i wouldn't say worse uh, but it, it's even more complex for people to really facilitate if they're also active members i mean you've been a member of the of the plone foundation board many many uh, uh, senior uh, 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 plone developers and now community members have have served their role on the plone foundation board and it's 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 really tricky to to keep those two separate uh, and also, if you if the Plone community should self-manage itself, uh, then there's the question: uh, how, how are we going? How, how are we going to self-manage ourselves? How does that, that that's, happen? That's the next point, and that's the Not next point indeed. Yeah. So that's uh, also, and then it gets of course interesting because uh, uh, the next point for the Plone Foundation Board is improve Plone's documentation and market positioning. Yes, but that's also managing. A bit, and then you all see. You see again uh, the. But it's. I really. I really. Uh, 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 I really endorse this. This part because I've been nagging myself uh, uh, in private to people about this in the last few years. Also being team lead, and having some some questions like, "Hey, uh, where should I go uh, if if something goes above my." Uh, above my think, I think my jurisdiction or my team, what I'm 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 running, and I need to make tough decisions. Um, and then uh, the last one is also very uh, important, I think, to create a relationship, a better relationship with plone service providers. And for the rest, the sub-bullet points, uh, check out the, the posting. And now, indeed, for the second one, Philip. Yeah, um, we're going to have a, a new team or re an, an old team reorganized. It's going to be the steering circle. Uh, if you don't know what that means, um, it is a is a, is a combination of a couple of things and it will serve as a successor to the framework team uh, as i'm quoting here directly taking on the role of making important decisions for all components of the plone framework and the steering circle will be able to delegate decision making back to the teams if necessary so the steering circle is going to what well, we had a couple of like, yeah, but, I mean the steering circle is not new. We've had it now no. for I think two years. Uh, Christy Wainwright was Christy was I think very active on starting it up at two years ago or two or three years ago, and the steering circle was like, okay, we need a common ground to have a meeting every one or two months where we discuss what's going on there. Yeah, the well, teams, it was just passing information. But it was like passing going information. Through the teams, yeah. all the team leads say, okay, there's no yeah. news, or there, this is the news. And yeah. now it's officially been, uh, or it it will have the power to actually make decisions. And Steering before it was, circle it, it 2 wasn't 0. neither fish nor flesh. It was like always, um, we had discussions in these meetings and in other meetings as well. 
but they uh, it was always what well, let how it actually happens is that people get together at a sprint or at a conference or, or they meet online for some reason and they discuss things and they uh, try to get a feel of what the community thinks. And uh, after, if, if it's a, if, if it's a uh, topic where different opinions may exist, it, that takes longer for consensus to, uh, to evolve and then this will that that consensus and th that's my my experience in the last couple of years all the the only thing that we did and we got yelled at that for some by sometimes we only picked up the consensus that was already formed by the community and communicated that as now this is the official position uh, just one example is that um, th there we didn't have that many tough decisions one is obviously we have to write we will write volto that was no brainer uh, but then we will make that the official version that is Plon 6 is Plon Vol is Volto and uh, the classic is an additional button on the like if you start up Plon and mm -hmm. you create uh, say create new Plon site that's what you get for new installs for new installs Ex exactly yes. we had that was a uh, I thought there was going to be much more discussion about that but that just flew flew over uh, people thought about that and discussed that and it took a couple probably two years to to uh, to be totally uh, without a lot of opposition on that but that that is like one of the decisions that that has been made but now uh, um, the is it will, will it take uh, since it will be a successor to the framework team will it discuss single plips like technical we'll have to see we'll have to see I'm, I'm also so uh, to add to you uh, uh, indeed uh, a lot of decisions uh, were uh, I mean if, they, if it's a, we don't have a kind of voting system in, in the Plone community where you can send in your vote for on every single decision to make and like you say people sense around look for consensus and when it's a good idea and the people are actually uh, also able to do it or, or also Plone companies are putting their, their strength behind it and say look this is the way to go uh, um, then that stuff gets done uh, what we did have uh, uh, an issue with sometimes is that if you're not at that location, if uh, so, f an anecdote, we discussed the whole Python 2 to Python 3 migration movement at, uh, at Ploch in 2015. Um, I think I was wearing the shirts, uh, one of the shirts from Ploch uh, this afternoon when I went to the gym. Um, and that's, that's on the location, the people there, they collect indeed all the, all the information they already have and they try to make a best effort. They do a best effort to, to get consensus and say, look, this is the direction we'll go to. But what still happens is that if people are not at the sprint or they're not at the conference or they're not at uh, this, the online forums for a few months, then, this, then there is some kind of soft decision being taken, a direction is made. And still, some people feel left out because they didn't know about it, and that's for me. I think. Or they're not coming to sprints because they they'd have to take a flight for I don't know eight, eight hour fl plane plane ride. Yeah, so there's sprint. always that's things that you're not. not an so it, and there, I think the steering circle will really help if we those those soft uh, decisions are uh, 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 before they are official decisions they still also pass by the steering circle people can give feedback and then we have a kind of okay look it has also been discussed upcoming agenda for the steering circle these and these decisions we need to talk about and then you still have the opportunity to chime in uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, and, and, to, and to give your opinion and to also uh, feel part of the community and that's that step uh, as some as often we try and it works but sometimes uh, uh, you see that decisions are kind of soft made and are implemented and then people ask but when and where was this decided and then people say uh, maybe the sprint maybe the blog maybe the conference and you get different answers and then it gets a bit sketchy so yeah, I really, I, for me personally take take longer especially the oh, yeah. big topics it's not like oh there was a meeting three people at a sprint and something was decided there, there was like it's that's just the end of maybe a one or two year long discuss discussion in topic in in tickets uh, sprints uh, after conference talks and stuff like that so it, it's it, yeah I'm, i have a good feeling about how we do how we do things in the community uh, decision making uh, the good thing is we don't have really tough decisions uh, to make at the moment like uh, the, 
we have a lot of work to do. But yeah, we have <laughs> some. Well, yeah, yeah, but, but it's, we always it's have a lot horrible. of work to We're do. We're in a really good position. We did the yeah. Python three stuff. Uh, Volta is really great. Obviously, I'd like to have Quanta, the new UI uh, UX for Volta. Uh, for the next Volta version uh, now, and I'd like to have some other things, but um, it's 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 not Christmas yeah. yet. So the steering circle, just to make a point, Philip and I are chatting about it, and we're 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 being a long participant in the community. But this is not this is just we're just discussing the news item. The Plone Board uh, uh, published this on on the Plone Board website their pro, uh, priorities and the steering circle, uh, and we'll happily see. And we urge everybody to to look at those two news items and uh, and. To start participating, because that's also, I think, uh, something we should mention. Uh, I'm reading now again from the news item. Eric Steele, Plant's long-time release manager, will take on a new role as community manager, so responsible for leading the new steering circle. So it will not be the Plant uh, president, uh, Plant Foundation president being there, um, which I think is a very good thing, because if you look at what Erico is doing, I'm also working together with Erico in the, in the AI team, and I think... Eric has been doing all over in teams and working. So Eric will uh, uh, will lead this new effort for the steering circle 2.0, I'd say. Um, and another quote, uh, the new steering circle will bring together representatives from each team and the foundation board to discuss important topics and make decisions that impact the overall direction of the project. So um, the, the previous steering circle was also a bit more free, like, okay, if you want to join, join. Uh, um, what I read from this is that it's really the, the teams uh, that send representatives to the, to the meeting. So if you want to be active in the Plone community, uh, um, you could do that as an individual. But please also, if you have some time left and you are interested in, uh, in helping out, uh, join the team. Check out the teams because... What I see from this with Circus Circle, the intention, I think, what I read here, is to have people work in teams, the teams uh, 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 send rep representative to the steering circle, and that's where the consensus is reached on important discussions and decisions that have to be made. And one extra, extra uh, tidbit I find very interesting, uh, they also will bring aboard now the ZOAP team. So, yeah. quoting, the inclusion of the ZOAP team in the decision-making process will help to ensure that the framework remains true to its roots while also adapting the changing needs for its users. Because that has been, from my personal perspective, indeed, you have like, like ZOAP, and ZOAP is doing, and Plone is on top of that, uh, uh, using a lot of the functionality, uh, but it feels, it has been feel a bit like, a bit separated. It's, it's not because they... They were invited, but it's it's not like a lot of stuff. There's not like 15 people working on that uh, at any given time. It's uh, Michael Hovitz and uh, and Jens Wagelpols at some point. Uh, and uh, Michael uh, Michael is coming to the sprint uh, in yep. Austria. That is great. And um, we're really happy with what they're doing. And they need to be part of that dis dis uh, these decisions and these discussions uh, to get the communication uh, flow in, in all directions. And that is true for all the teams. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm yep. very much looking forward to uh, how it's going to shape out. Yeah. It's going to be interesting when we have dis tough decision decisions to make. So let's rename Plone to Lope. Whatever. Okay, well, let's. Uh, oh, we have another Philip. topic. Uh, sprints. There's yeah, going to be so a sprint. final. The community news. There's a new sprint. I have, technically, there was already one small online sprint from the marketing team to update some, uh, uh, do some work on Plan.org. Uh, uh, <laughs> I tried to participate, and I had my own agenda mixed up because I had a birthday uh, uh, management task the whole weekend, so I couldn't do that that much. Uh, but still, some progress was made. But uh, there's a real. Uh, on locations, the first official on location sprint of 2023 is the Alpine City Sprint 2023 in Innsbruck. Again, yes, and I've Finally. been there for a couple of t a couple of times already. Uh, it's organized by Jens Klein and uh, Christine Baumgartner of Klein and Partner. They live in in in, in Innsbruck. Uh, the uh, I think the office is is a, uh, the place is a different place. It's uh, Robert Niederreiter's office. I'm th I think I'm not one one hundred percent sure. So thank thanks to him for for uh, it's in, a, in an office uh, uh, office collection sci science office collection building. Uh, I call yeah. it an office hotel. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, on a slightly different location, like 400 or 500 meters from the previous location where Jens and Christina had their, their office. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been working from home like the last two or three years, and I think they have also for their work now moved to, to working from home. Uh, and then they rent, and they, we do the same if we would meet with customers, we would rent a place somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be packed. There's going to be 27 yeah. people coming. 
Um, yeah, the, Thomas was on the waiting list, and uh, they told him to. It's going to be uh, cozy, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll manage. So uh, it's going to be uh, f full. Yeah. So it's next and week, Monday fifth to Friday yeah. the tenth. And uh, Innsbruck is great in in because they, some when there's uh, sun when the sun comes out and the snow is there it's, it's very bright and uh, you see the mountains and uh, at, at, at some some years we went up to a mountain and uh, had uh, food at a great restaurant on the top of a mountain stuff like that looking down on Innsbruck and or other places. Uh, That is, that's a good, good, I'll good uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say that who cares that we're going over one hour again. I had this, uh, so um, my partner, one of my partners joined and we were sitting there and chatting a bit and he was suddenly like, what are those people there doing? We were sitting at, indeed, the hotel was on the top of the North Kette, I think. We went there uh, 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 by cable, a car, and you could look in the, in the, I call it, you could, you could see Innsbruck there and you could see the inn there. And he was like, what are those people doing there? And I was looking at the right, and there were like four people had opened their laptops. Uh, there was like nice glasses of wine and nice glasses. Uh, everything was in this uh, white uh, uh, covered table with all, all things. Like, Why are they pulling their laptops? I say, yeah, sorry, <laughs> this is a development sprint. That's what developers sometimes do here. Yeah. <laughs> making, making commits at a, at making a fancy commits restaurant. At, 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 at uh, 2,000 meters or what was it? Uh, in fancy restaurants. Uh, yes. because uh, you, can't, you can't take only that much in of the view. And like at some point, you need to go back into the code. Like, yeah. Um, this year, it's been a three-year hiatus. Uh, the last one was, uh, we discussed it beforehand. I think it, uh, 2020 was the, really the last one before the pandemic hit only one or two weeks uh, uh, after that. Um, so, we, yeah, it's been online. So really cool to go back there. Uh, there's also a nice uh, excursion band because you didn't say this year's theme is Let Plone Shine Like a Diamond. And the, I think... Uh, maybe I'm discrediting Jens, but I think Christine is always looking into these nice excursions because they were uh, very cool ones in the past. And this year there's a Wednesday excursion to the Crystal Welton of Swarovski, which is in a small town close to uh, close to Innsbruck, uh, where we can go there. But we had also very cool excursions uh, uh, in previous sprints. Uh, I think people went to the... Uh, there's a huge base tunnel now, a train tunnel being uh, uh, dug, the Alps, or, yes. uh, excavated under the Alps, uh, uh, and people went there uh, before 2020. Uh, we went in 2020. We went to a very nice uh, wellness center in uh, in Sultan. Uh, I've been to a huge circular painting of one of the uh, wars that was fought in Central Europe, and somebody did that. That was the old-style television theater thing. There's a huge painting there uh, 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 where we also visited with a with a museum on the history of uh, uh, Austria and Tyrol and uh, and the border there. So yeah, that's They're another part of that battle, uh, which they lost, by the way. Which one of the four? Because <laughs> I didn't learn it. In, uh, we, we kind of yeah. skipped that in school. We, we, in the Netherlands, we get like First World War, which we kind of uh, it was, it wasn't uh, escaped. It wasn't a big World War. It was one of the Napoleonic uh, wars, and they, they fought a battle there. And, um, it, it was, was very like, close to Innsbruck, yeah. 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 So that's the, the whole side. So Innsbruck is great. I've, I, I've been there now a few times. Yeah. I've got my own favorite restaurants already. Um, but, of course, this is the TPN, so subjects, Philip, what yeah, are we? Well, a lot of people lot already of collected collected plans on what they want to work on uh, those five days. Yeah, um, there's, bring a, it there's on. a huge list of uh, topics that, is, uh, that we're going to work on. There's going to be some work on Volto. Um, there's not that many Volto core developers there, but Victor is going to be there. So I hope he, uh, he'll make some progress towards Quanta, which will be uh, the, the U Volto. Auto UX for Plon 7, whatever you want to name it. Um, uh, but also a lot of backend uh, work is going to be done, uh, planning uh, to uh, pull out the UI for Plon Classic into a separate package, like all the templates, all the viewlets, all the stuff that uh, Plon with Volto doesn't need to have that uh, ripped out of uh, Plon, uh, CMF Plon at least uh, and uh, put in a separate package as long as it's still there. Like, CMF Plon still has a lot of templates that are not used for that. Uh, if, if you use Volto, uh, there's going to be work on Z3C form. Uh, we're going to discuss, uh, there's a couple of topics like e work on easy form will uh, continue, which is the form uh, add on for Plone Classic. Um, work on ZOAP. Thomas uh, um, um, yep. Michael Hubitz is going to come. Mm. Uh, we're going to discuss clone of distributions. I'm going to work on the 
relations endpoint uh, for the REST API uh, with Katya, hopefully. Yeah. We'll of course, get that with finished. this, many people will talk about the roadmap. Uh, yes, uh, what obviously. What you see in there, update the roadmap document. Uh, and something that's also close to my heart because I've been uh, kind of helping out there uh, last year a bit, finding my way around, is the testing and infrastructure improvements, which is, uh, I mean, Plone has, alway, uh, has always been really good at testing uh, its own uh, stuff uh, uh, from unit tests to functional tests to integration tests to run them. Uh, uh, but the setup is huge, and it's not only the testing part, it's also beforehand the, the linting, uh, uh, like using Black or uh, 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 using other modern tools, but the, there have been like four or five previous tools for that. Um, and that's an, if you want to know about it, there's also a discussion that was already started on communityplone.org about uh, modern uh, uh, CI and linting support there. Uh, so there's a lot of topics around the, uh, the testing and infrastructure improvements that we can make. David Glick did a talk on that on the Plone yeah, conference. Uh, that was that, interesting. If you that one, if you haven't seen it already. So Py that's a myriad of topics like GitHub Actions use, uh, Tox, PyTest. I saw a news item this afternoon about Nox, which is apparently the successor of Tox. Oh, okay. okay, interesting. Indeed, the future of, of Jenkins and Mr. Roboto. Should we, uh, we have our own uh, Jenkins instance now and a kind of int uh, integration glue package, Mr. Roboto, that interfaces between Jenkins and the GitHub repositories uh, uh, that might need an update. Or we could move to GitHub Actions for all of that. We've been already doing that for a yes. lot of our testing parts. For example, Photo is, uh, tests are run uh, primarily out of uh, GitHub Actions. Um, so, yeah, a lot of topics there as well. And, of course, documentation is an ongoing uh, 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 attention thing we have to work on. Uh, people didn't put it there, but I myself want to also look at marketing next week because I, I've uh, volunteered for the marketing team uh, and part of that now since the plan conference. It wasn't really listed there yet, uh, but that's maybe my fault because I didn't add, a, add I should add it to the, to the planning document. Uh, so a lot of stuff uh, 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 to discuss and to work on uh, and to have fun with. Yeah, and good food and probably lots of things to drink and uh, great location and lots of people, really nice people. So if you've never been to a sprint, again, we pl we, for we try to we can't force you, obviously, but we'd love to force you to go to a sprint if you've never been to one and meet yeah. uh, the nice people from the Plon community in person. Uh, you don't have to be a uh, hardcore developer. Uh, all skill levels are welcome at uh, Plone Sprints. Uh, you can discuss marketing, you, uh, d uh, experience uh, or suffer through uh, UX uh, issues and write, uh, suggest improvements for these. And there's you don't need any development skills for that. So, um, yeah, go, yeah, go to a sprint. Go to a Don't come yeah. to that one because we're yeah, I was going to absolutely <laughs> full. There's we're not having, a single yeah, Yota. Yeah. Uh, and we're too late as well. I mean, uh, yeah. but then again, if we would have pro uh, promoted the Innsbruck Sprint uh, uh, at the middle of January, then we're all also already like 25 people. But yeah, there exactly. will be many, was, many sprints to come this year as well. We'll have fast. the... Hopefully, again, the Beethoven sprint, uh, uh, yeah. and I think that will, uh, sprinting will be... Uh, I mean... Did you? I, I tried to look that up. Did you know uh, uh, that that kind of the sprinting was invented in the Python community and also the SOAP community? Yes, yes, I know. We could do a history session about that. That is uh, you as the historian. You can, yeah. Oh, that would be cool <laughs> once as well. Yeah, at, at yeah. So s some other point. Yeah. So yeah, sprints are, are the, the the yeah the main vessel and how we how we uh, also come together physically uh, and be able to discuss things because we've been discussing a lot of things online uh, for the last few years. I mean, we kind of started this also during the pandemic to have a kind of chat uh, 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 together, but also get get the news out. Uh, but these uh, these physical uh, and it's real. It's so cool to be back uh, in Innsbruck or in any yeah. other location. Uh, yeah, that will be very cool. That's the first, the first uh, real uh, on-site sprint uh, for this year. So we're not doing a add-on presentation this time. Uh, next episode, we're gonna pick, uh, show some some add-ons for Volto and uh, Classic, 
uh, again. Um, by the way, we, we have another main topic that we actually wanted to talk about, but we're not because Fred wanted to uh, showcase all the various ways of installing <laughs> Plone and w what like the pitfalls are and what the state of discussion is there. Uh, we're going to obviously move that uh, to another episode of the Plone Newsroom because it's, we're already over one hour and we don't want to uh, ruin your whatever evening even more than that so uh, but stay tuned we're going to do that uh, look at the installation story uh, like can you install Volto with build out one of the weird questions that will certainly get asked on the forum you were interested in uh, containers yeah actually um, can you also develop a uh, classic when your instance is running in a docker container yeah Stay yeah. tuned. Interesting. Stay tuned. Um, okay. So, thank uh, so. you, everybody. If you have been following us along for again over an hour, one one hour, four minutes. Yeah. So, Philip, see, closing see remarks you for you. Um, have a great um, have a great tri uh, tri uh, trip to Innsbruck. Are you leaving tomorrow or on Monday? I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm okay, there. I'm, uh, uh, I'm taking the train early yes. on Monday because it's only a two tra yes. a two hour train ride from Munich. Yeah, it's with me a small. Uh, I try to look at the trains again. Uh, Maurits is going by train, uh, and I'm going by uh, by plane tomorrow. And uh, if you are somewhere in Innsbruck for the sprint uh, tomorrow, I think the central the meeting place is Cafe Central again, close to the station, at the end of the afternoon, beginning of the evening. And otherwise, we'll see each other uh, on Monday morning. Okay, thanks for tuning in, and um, see you next time. See Bye. you next time. Thanks, Philip. Bye bye.